Hi everyone, it's Evelyn from Twin Flames 3344. I'm here to do another quick um, five question read for you, for your Divine Masculine. And I wanna preface that with, I don't believe that, you know, we're looking at outcomes for your Divine Masculine, but I know that this energy does give, it gave me comfort a long time, for a long time in my journey. So I wanted to um, allow that to some others of you who are in the same boat that I was. Um, but really, it's about, you know, connecting with your higher self and, um, and just staying in your heart and staying present, you know, not looking forward and back. Don't look forward because that's, that's outcome. You know, you're creating anxiety because you don't have that yet. That's, that's, you know, creating lack because you're looking forward to something you don't have. And looking back is, is pain and, and sorrow because it's, something from the past that you are no longer okay so it's so important to stay present in your joy in your heart and um, and just you know enjoy the read allow it to just be something fun to do if that's what you need to do okay um, a couple other messages um, oh if you need any coaching I am go I'm going on a trip next week on the 20th to the should be back the 26th, so I won't be doing any reads, any uh, coaching during that time. So I wanted to offer 20% um, off of all of my prices today, um, just for today, for this week, for anyone who wants to get into coaching before I go away. Um, I am going to uh, receive an award on behalf of my father, who passed away um, in 2016. And I actually have to speak in front of a room full of, of very well-educated people and uh, it's not something I'm very comfortable with, so this is one of my uh, my leaps of faith, basically, is speaking in front of a lot of people. Um, and I'm going, it's my opportunity to, to actually, in accepting my father's award, because he invented uh, medical devices, and uh, he's receiving the award for his support in, uh, in the National Society and Foundation for his field. So I wanted to bridge what he did into Reiki and how much healing um, doctors can do when they incorporate Reiki into their normal practice and how amazing that would be you know for doctors who are basically in procedures for two hours to not only be doing the procedure to heal the patient but also giving them energy to heal their patients so um, I'm calling on all of you now asking for your assistance and your energy to help support me in this um, when I do this on the 18th um, it's an, it's a gala at night on Sunday the 18th. So if you could think of me and send some uh, positive energy my way for my strength so I don't get nervous, I'd really appreciate it. It would be so helpful. Um, thank you so much, all of you, for all your likes, shares, subscribes, as usual, and um, for your comments. Um, I so much appreciate you. The support that you give me, you know, is, it means everything to me. So I'm going to do this read for you. I, I'm going to just give you a few messages about the energies uh, today and yesterday before I get into that. Um, today is March 9th, 2018. The nine is the Hermit and the date adds up to 23, which is the King of Wands. And the King of Wands is the Man of Passion. And the Hermit is all about wisdom and seclusion and, um, you know, going within. It's a little bit of a contradiction here, but it's really, it's really um, what we're going through in this process, you know, going within and in solitude to be able to go forth with passion, very focused passion with our third energy. So it's really um, nice energy, actually. Wise and passionate. And 23 also is a, a special number of mine, so I like that it's, it's 23 today. Um, and just, I don't know if I completed that, I'm offering 20% um, off all my services. Um, just uh, for anyone who, who reaches out to me um, today for this week. So before I leave, I actually leave on the 15th, okay? 
Okay. Um, my website and my email are below, as usual. Um, I asked Archangel Michael this morning uh, what I might tell you as far as his message to you. And he just confirmed what I always say at the end of my videos, rise and be loved. And then I, act, I asked Krista Sophia as well, what's the advice that I should give today? And I received the cards, let friends help you and express your love. Okay. I've been getting a lot of Sagittarius energy coming up the past couple days. I got 9-10, begin again. So that's, that's big for starting over, you know, letting the past go. Um, I also got the Ten Commandments come up. I also received, mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. And so important to connect to God. And I don't have a religious upbringing, so this is not something native to me. Um, but I've been getting, and Spirit's connecting with me. It's so important, your connection with your higher self, to God, to Source, to um, Prime Creator, you know, whatever you want to call the this love energy. This is the the way to to your beloved is through your connection to God. Okay. So even though it's it's about going within, it doesn't mean we're not manifesting our our three D union. We are. You just have to know it. Okay. And no fear. You know we're mastering letting go of fear, all fears. We're mastering our thoughts, our emotions, our passions, and our manifestation abilities. And this is, you know, the final test of manifestation. Are you gonna manifest your 3D union? You already have it in the 5D, you're being blocked right now. Um, don't allow your, your feeling of disconnect from God or from 5D to allow you to spiral back into fear. It's just time to get 3D stuff done. So be who you are, be in your knowing, and just go forth with what you're called to do today. One day at a time, you don't have to plan. So I'm gonna do the same five card reading that I did before. It's from the Divine Feminine to the Divine Masculine. And the five questions are, what does the Divine Masculine want the Divine Feminine to know? What does he not want her to know? Um, what does he want from her? What does he want her to do today? And how does he feel about her? Okay. And I'll pull, you, so I'll pull a few um, uh, Oracle cards also for, for the Divine Feminine. So again, here. these are the five questions. Now I usually get one or one or two maybe cards that answer the question and then I get cards that are like the backstory. So I'll read that to you once I've laid down all the cards. Okay, getting a little nervous. So uh, what does the Divine Masculine want the Divine Feminine to know? This is organic only. Oh, there we go, right out. Four of Cups and the Death card. And the backstory was just one card, which is the Seven of Wands. Okay, what does the Divine Masculine not want the Divine Feminine to know? This is Organics only. Anything I ask for is Organics only. And I have the Five of Pentacles. The backstory is the Six of Pentacles, the Ten of Pentacles, and I will show you these again, and the Three of Cups. Third question is, what does the Divine Masculine Organic want from the Organic Divine Feminine? Twin Flames. What does he want from your Organic Twin Flames? And that was the Strength card. And actually the uh, six cups as well and the backstory is the king of cups the nine of cups and the nine of wands and one more the queen of pentacles 
Fourth question is, what is the, the organic divine masculine twin flame want the divine feminine to do today? What does the divine masculine want the divine feminine to do today? Okay. And we got the magician. And the backstory is the hermit, the two of swords, and that's it. And then the final question is, how does the divine masculine, organic divine masculine twin flame feel about his organic divine feminine twin flame? So divine masculine, how do you feel about the divine feminine? How do you feel about the divine feminine? How is it that you feel about the divine feminine? Okay. We've got the Ace of Pentacles. And the backstory is the Queen of Cups. And two more. The Ten of Cups. And the Eight of Swords. And then it ends up with the bottom of the deck being the Four of Pentacles. And if you're curious, underneath the Four of Pentacles is the Chariot. Okay. So what does he want you to know? We have the Four of Cups and the Death card. And the Four of Cups, it can be about boredom. It can be, you know, tired of being receiving the same same old thing that he always gets. Okay, is this just going to be the same as, as he's received before? But it's also about grounding and integrating. And it's about not seeing what's being offered by God. Okay, so I'm going to clarify these as well because these are all upright. So it, I'm going to clarify the energies for each each question. So this is about transition. You have death here. It's not a card of sorrow, sorrow. So I'm not a, I'm not getting a specific death from this. I'm getting this is transformation. Transformation from and there's Scorpio energy here as well. It's very deep transformation. And again that goes into grounding. It's like very deep roots. So I'm getting like, and I've got, I got this before this week already, that the Divine Masculine is our, he's grounding for us right now. As we're going up, they're going down. To really ground us. The backstory is the Seven of Wands, which is about someone standing up for themselves, standing their ground but it can be a little bit defensive as well. But since we're grounding here, he's standing very strong in his grounding. So that's good. And he's standing up to others who would come against him. So it's very positive energy. It's like, you know, he's holding, as we hold space, the 5D, this is him holding space for you in the 3D, okay? What he doesn't want you to know is the struggles that he's having. Okay, it's five of pentacles, which can, which can indicate financial struggle, but it can just be practical struggles as well. Maybe he got hurt. Maybe he has an actual injury. He's trying to keep up with the divine feminine, okay? But he's been hurt, or he might actually have a physical injury. <laughs> this was actually very humorous for me. He actually was making a little joke. He's saying, see, I, one of my legs is the root in the ground. I can't move, <laughs> I can't move. I think that's pretty funny. And he's on crutches, so he's still using a crutch in a sense, but he is moving and he has help, it's right there. But he's just saying that, you know, he's struggling a little bit. The backstory for this is the Six of Pentacles, which is about giving and receiving and maybe you know, he's giving a lot right now to Ten of Pentacles to his family. And in this family picture, you'll see there's, you know, a grandparent, um, there's a child there, and there's two dogs. The grandfather seems like he's up to something. So there may be a, a parent involved with this scenario. And then we have the Three of Cups. So this is about socializing. Um, and maybe he feels left out of family socializing, um, that they always want something from him. 
and he's been left out in the cold by his family. And maybe, maybe there was a party that he was left out of, or maybe he decided to leave a party, a family party that he was in. But something he doesn't want you to know. It has a lot to do with um, business too, because it's, it's all pentacles. And it, maybe there's some kind of um, some kind, well, some kind of business. It could be a family party too, because it's practical energies as well. So some kind of family or business. It could be family business related gathering as well. Okay. So what is what does he want from the divine feminine? We have the Strength card and the Six of Cups. Okay, and that's, um, there could be a Leo involved. Um, but really this is about children, okay? That Leo energy, which is very much about the inner child and the joy and the fun. So what does he want, what does he want from you? He wants you to be strong And he wants you to know he sees your your inner inner Leo, and he wants he wants you to be his best friend. He's offering his cup. It's so cute this card. He's offering his cup to his best friend. He knows that you've already given him your love, and now see he's willing to receive it. They're saying stay my best friend, but also. Just be strong and know that, you know, there's children involved too, for those of you who have children involved. But it's really about the innocence of the past, you know, can you be strong and let go of the past? Can we go back to the way we were? Okay, and Spirit's connecting with me on that. Let go of the past and can we go back to the way we were? So we have, um, as the backstory on this, is the King of Cups and the, this deck He's not as soft as most King of Cups. He's more like, it looks like he's had a drink. <laughs> he's been through the ringer a little bit. But he's very serious and trying to deal with, with his situation. We have the Nine of, of Cups here next to him. So he's, he's very satisfied in being on his own, in serving others. He wants you to he wants you to be there. Like he knows he knows it's hard that there's pain involved with this, but he wants you to be unconditional love and serve others. And that's how you get through this. You know, that's what the divine masculine wants to teach the divine feminine. Because that's what he's so good at, at on the 3D level. And also, um, you know, that he wants you to protect yourself, you know, but don't be um, defensive to him. Okay. Protect yourself out in the world. But don't block him. Because there's this, you know, feeling of dis defensiveness. Because, you know, when you're both thinking of, of all these multiple scenarios that could have happened because you're not in communication, you make up stories in your mind. So you both have these defensive blocks about like if they come in and like want to attack you and tell you you did something wrong you're like you're ready to defend yourself and that's that energy here so he's saying let down your guard just be love and be who you are that he loves you just the way you are in your nurturing practical um self where where you're taking care of yourself and you're enjoying yourself and loving yourself so what does he want us to do today and we have the magician make magic manifest Okay, know that you have the power. Be in your power and know what your power is. You have it all. The backstory for that is the hermit and the two of swords, which is all about wisdom and faith. 
he sang, and this, the hermit sits right across from the queen of pentacles. He's saying, he's saying, see yourself, see yourself. Look, you have everything. Be happy, do what's good for you, okay? He's shining a light on you. And how he feels about you is the ace of pentacles. It's all about, and this has been coming up all week. It's all about an offering a new life together, okay? This is in the, the um, traditional rider weight. It's, it's perfect contentment. This is a new life a perfect contentment. So it's a really beautiful card to have. And the back story is, is beautiful too. It's just a little in your head energy, right? How does he feel about you? He sees you as the queen of cups. You know, perfect family happiness. The one who's able to, to see things in love. And this perfect happiness. But you know, he's still in his head a little bit, right? He's a little afraid. <laughs> And then the underlying energy or his signature was the four of, of pentacles, but he's holding on and he's grounding for you. Okay, he's grounding your new life. And we have, like I said, the, uh, the chariot's right behind this. Okay, so he's coming in strong to ground. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to the first one, what, what the Divine Masculine wants you to know. I'm just going to clarify that. And, and maybe what, what he wants from you as well. So I think most of the other questions were pretty self-explanatory. Okay, what does the Divine Masculine want from, or what does he want you to know? What does the Organic Divine Masculine Twin Flame want the Divine Feminine to know? What does he want the Divine Feminine to know? So the death card and the four of, of cups are being clarified by the ace of wands reversed and the knight of swords. And this is an announcement and that's been coming up all week too as well. Um, it's like, um, I don't see this as um, like a creative or sexual block right now. I see this as a pending new passion, okay? There's go an announcement is coming, but it's being held back, okay, about a new passion. Because the old stuff still has to be wrapped up. And the, what he wants from you. And that, again, that was the strength card and the, the six of cups and it, the clarification comes out the king of cups reversed. Okay, so he's still, and I got the, um, uh, Ten of Swords reversed as well. Okay, so the worst is over. He's just wrapping up some residual, you know, sadness that he's had to deal with, and it especially can be related to children. And these two cards wanted to come out too. We got the Empress and the uh, Ten of Wands is about him confessing or her confessing to him. Okay, there's some kind of confessing or dropping of the burdens there. Okay, but that was very positive. I'm gonna pull some, uh, I'm gonna pull one card from the Tarot of Sexual Magic. By the way, that was um, Universal Golden Tarot and the uh, Rider Waite Mini. And this is the Tarot of Sexual Magic. We're gonna pick a card for the Divine Feminine. This is for the Divine Feminine. Okay, we have the, the Emperor. And the King of, um, swords here okay and this that's the confession card so it's about confessing about the third party situation which is no surprise to all of us right because most people are in a third party situation um, he's confessing about you know his control and manipulation of the situation you know you have these three cards here but there is a confession not sure to who, but the bottom of the deck is protection, okay? Either someone's manipu been manipulating for, for his protection or that he wants to reach out and protect you, but either way, there is a confession here. 
that he's trying to change, change his ways. Okay. In the Romance Angel deck, we have is this for the Divine Feminine. Let's clear. Divine Feminine, Organic Divine Feminine, Twin Flames. What is the advice? And we have wedding. Okay, and that says this situation involves marriage. And also coming out is let go of control issues. Okay, so allow this situation to unfold naturally. In case you're interested, the bottom of the deck is unrequited love. All right, so that's underlying energy. And again, this has to do with whatever uh, relationship they're leaving. The numerology deck we're going to do now. What is the advice for the Organic Divine Feminine Twin Flames? Organic Divine Feminine Twin Flames. Organic Divine Feminine Twin Flames. Clear? What is the advice for the Organic Divine Feminine Twin Flames? What is the, what is the advice? What is the advice? What is the advice? What is the advice? For the organic, oop, there we go. We got physical activity, so get out there and walk. And abundance actually wants to come out at the top here. Also, 88. Okay, physical activity is pink and purple. And there's blue in this, this markup is blue. So it's throat chakra, third eye, and high heart for abundance. So be in your abundance, enjoy yourself, They're 88 and 67. 67 is a four, and 88 is a seven. And four is of stability, building structure, and then seven is very spiritual. The 67 is a seven, the spiritualness with a motherly um, outer energy, okay? And then of course the abundance is, you see, it, it is what it is, it's eight and eight. So you have the inner strength of the eight and then the outer power of the eight expressing itself in abundance. When you see what you get, that's when you get abundance because you're being authentically you. Okay, and then surrenders at the bottom, if you're interested. Surrenders number 91, which is a one. That's that magician energy. It's also 10, the Wheel of Fortune. Um, for the Divine Feminine, I'm also going to pull from the Ascension deck. Okay, guides and angels, what is the advice for you? What is your advice for the Divine Feminine? Today, March 9th, 2018, what is the advice? And we got water. And the bottom, in case you're interested, the bottom is Ascended Master Retreats, number 49. I've been getting 49 all day today. And that's the Get Your Wish card, actually. 49 is a four, again, it's structure, building, support. I walk with the ascended masters. Know that about yourself. It's about standing in your power again, that you're a magician embodiment. Um, the card that you received is water. Remember, water is all about emotions, but it's, all, it's also so important that you drink enough water because it, it, it conducts, right? The energies that you want. Water permeates, it's number 15 in this deck, and that's the devil, but it's also a six, which is about love, family, and community. Um, the 15 is the five of excitement inside with the very focused masculine energy on the outside. So it could be a little bit manipulative, you know, thus the devil, but it's just about codependencies and, and repeating patterns and addictions, that kind of thing. It's about breaking them. And maybe water is what is key to that. Okay, water permeates everything, including the cells of your body. It carries pure divine love and special qualities that can assist ascension. Poseidon is in charge of the waters. Neptune is his elemental master and directs the Undines. Ask them to cleanse emotions. Emotionally based illnesses and relationship difficulties. Your guidance is to bless water everywhere to bring it to the fifth dimension. Ask Poseidon to link you to the music of the spheres to access the sounds of your perfect divine blueprint. 
and start to reinstate it. The affirmation is water, I love you, bless you, and thank you. I direct you to spread love around the planet. So every time you drink a glass of water, you know, bless the water, drink it to help bring more energy of love into the world. Um, it reminded me too about cleansing the emotions. Um, I was watching um, Teal. Um, I think her um, one of her videos is Ask Teal. But um, she was bringing up a, a way of bringing up our, our emotions and wounds to clear. Um, it, it's along the same lines of what we practice, you know, focusing on what we feel inside of our body. But literally one of the tools she brought up was while you're focusing on it, like for I, I have back pain in multiple places in my back. So I did it for each location because it's not general, it's specific to each location. So I have a wound, I have a wound right in the middle of my, my back at my waistline. And that I actually cleared already. Um, it brought up, I already knew it was associated with being shot in the back in the Holocaust. But um, your wounds are very literal, okay? I actually have a birthmark there too and I was told many, many years ago that, that birthmarks were um, evidence of, of past life wounds. And I had already known about this, um, that I was a little boy in the Holocaust and I'd been shot in the back. But um, as soon as I did this exercise where while you're feeling it and describe what it feels like literally and write it with your left hand, but I wrote with my right hand since I am left-handed. And then you, after you read it or after you write it, like, you know, if it feels like stabbing pain or whatever, you know, write that down with, with your left hand. I did it with my right. Um, and then read it afterwards and read, like try to translate any words you can get from each thing that you wrote down. What are you getting? Cause it's not gonna look like your normal writing cause it's your opposite hand. Um, and it's so amazing what you get out of it. Um, the first time I tried it, I got, um, tomato, which wouldn't mean anything to anyone but me. Um, I eat a lot of tomatoes, but I hated tomatoes when I was young. And something I remember from when I was four years old was that um, I hated tomatoes. And even my mother, who wasn't the easiest mom, you know, she made me do a lot of things, but even she didn't make me eat tomatoes. And I remember being at this camp. Um, we were at a cottage, I think, in... Um, I guess Connecticut. Um, and this, we were at this camp and they forced me to eat tomatoes. And I always remembered that, like even my mother didn't make me eat tomatoes and these people at this camp forced me to eat these tomatoes. It was like the most awful thing. But it was coming up also when I had a, uh, a food scan that, that I shouldn't eat tomatoes, which was so weird because I've never had an issue digesting, digesting tomatoes and I love tomatoes now. So it was weird that, I, that it came up for me. So I tried it, but it's very hard to take tomatoes out of my diet. Well, again, tomatoes came up again, because I was just looking up, again, the blood typing um, diet. And for my blood type, I'm not supposed to eat tomatoes. <laughs> so it was, wasn't just that, but it, other things came up with the other words that were coming up for me. And I did it again today. I had to do it for every location in my spine, but literally after I did redid my waist um, and bringing up that wound again, it actually, the pain started resolving more. So each time you do this, it helps relieve the pain because the pain are literal wounds that we need to bring up and clear. So um, today I had done my upper back because I always forget about my upper back because my lower back tends to bother me more, but I do have a, a bulge in, you know, in between my wings. So I focused on that today. And I want to tell you, because this was so profound for me. So I wrote down, when I first felt into it, I felt that feeling you get like with Ben Gay. So I wrote down Ben Gay and I got, I got some things, but it wasn't clear. I got I am and some, and someone's name that, that somebody else had told me about that they were dealing with that day. So I might, it's a message for them, but I, I laid back down again and, and felt into it again. What does it feel like? And I got knife in back. And then I got stabbed in back. So I wrote them both down with my right hand. 
and the words that I read out of my scribble, and you can see, I'll show you my scribble, so you can see what it looks like, right? So it doesn't look like normal handwriting. Okay. So what I saw in those words, you just wrote, you don't read across yet, you just translate what you see in this scribble. What do you see? Just what it randomly, whatever comes first to mind. And what I got was the words, and I'll tell you exactly, united, kind of, lineage, knowledge, and knowing for the first words. The second word I got an M that is to me Mary Magdalene, so I wrote Mary Magdalene down. And the third word, um, I got luck, lack, leech, teach, curly, and my name actually, Evelyn. And it literally reads across, um, united kind of lineage, knowledge, knowing of Mary Magdalene, her luck, her lack, her leech, her teaching. And maybe she had curly hair too, like me, I don't know. But um, it was about focusing on my, my lineage of Mary Magdalene, which was, is my direct connect basically. And this was written knife and back. So it's my, uh, my betrayal feelings about Jesus and spirits connecting with me. So it's a huge wound to clear. And this is a, you know, a, a group wound to clear. And the second part where I wrote stabbed and back, I literally translated in the first word, stalled and stalked, and I got Mary Magdalene again in the middle, and then world and words, literally stalled Mary Magdalene's world. So it's pretty amazing stuff. So this is bringing up wounds that you still might need to clear. So give it a try. Let me know what you, um, what you come up with. I'd love to hear. But I know it helped me, and actually both pains, my upper back pain and my waist pain, which always hurt me when I'm sitting on the couch like this because I always have to arch my back. If I hunch at all, it feels like a cut being pulled open. So I'm already much more comfortable just from having gone through that. So if it can help somebody else, I'd, I'd, like, to, I'd like to help you. Okay, so this is the Ascension deck. We did that. Now we have the, uh, the Past Life deck. Okay. And this is for the Divine Feminine. The Divine Feminine. Clear, clear. Organic Divine Feminine Twin Flames. What's the advice? What is the advice? What is the advice? Okay. We have lessons and blessings. Okay. And the bottom of the deck is Scribe or Writer, if you want to see. Scribe or Writer. This is the picture. Okay, so maybe you need to do some journaling about your lessons and blessings, okay? There's a stopwatch, okay? It's about time, being an illusion, but it's also about the past, okay? Talking about what I just did, clearing the past by journaling, okay? And knowing that time is an illusion. Just knowing what your lessons and blessings are, okay? Journal. All right, and then we have um, Journey of Love. Okay, is this for the Divine Feminine? Divine Feminine, Divine Feminine, please clear. <sighs> you guys are a little stressed, you know? Relax. Go take a walk. Okay, so we need advice for the Divine Feminine. Advice for the Divine Feminine, the Organic Divine Feminine Twin Flames, please. Organic Divine Feminine, okay. We got Yin Yang Lover, okay. The bottom is Heart of the Moment. It's number 16 if you're interested, it's very red. It's very red and white with a little, there's just a gold light in the middle. And I'm just gonna read you the card we pulled, which is number eight, Yin Yang Lover. It's very pink and green, which is interesting because the numbers, the, the cards I got from the numerology deck today were all pink and green. So heart and high heart, number eight, yin-yang lover. And it reads, the force of attraction is stronger than your conscious mind, or than your conscious control. There's no need to fight this inner genius. You can learn to speak its language instead. What is it that captures you? that pulls you close, that holds so much light for you. Why fight it? Don't step away from what you really love to grab hold of a second prize. 
Why not claim your first prize? It is there waiting for you. It is yours alone, beloved. No one else can claim your divine birthright for you. Be yielding and let your desire fill your body, your heart, and your mind. You don't have to fight for what is already yours. It will come to you through the field of attraction that emanates from your own heart. It is not a question of worthiness or deservedness. It is not a question of trying to work out what you need or want. Your heart always knows, and Spirit's connecting with me. Listen. If you still can't hear, then just feel. You'll get the gist of it soon enough. This oracle has a message for you. No matter whether you seem to be heading closer to your goal or further, further away, you are making real spiritual progress, and what you want is the same thing that is wanting you. What you're seeking is seeking you. It's only a matter of time before you get it. And the poem reads, The moment when to fill my heart again is measured not in time or sweet remorse, nor tears that wash away unbridled pain, or morning's light which sings its soft retort. Such love has slept through storm and winters long. No call could break the stillness's embrace, spirits connecting with me, or, chase, cha or hasten change before the season's song unfurls its melody and words so chaste. Empowered thus, I find myself compelled to cast aside emotions dormant still. My feelings spoke from depths the answer welled, no need or past the emptiness to fill and spirit still connecting. At one our touch has opened hearts anew, of patience born, there waits a love so true. So I hope that was helpful for you today. Again, don't forget to reach out to me if you need my assistance and uh, have an amazing week. You know, we're all getting there. Be in your faith and your knowing and rise and be loved. Take care, everyone.